previously on Beards, Bourbon, and Games. Much better. Oh, needs to be charged. Will Mike be able to overcome this daunting foe? Find out on today's episode of Beards, Bourbon, and Games. Welcome back to Beards, Bourbon, and Games. Today, we are going to complete the cycle by painting the charging station, or the PlayStation Slim, as we've come to call it. I'm your co-host, Mike, and with me as always is... Connor Kirk Corey. All right, so uh, we're going to kind of do a step-by-step of how I had to do this, and Corey's going to ask me a bunch of questions I'm not going to be able to answer. Uh, this charging station, I was not able to take apart. Uh, you may know a better way to take it apart, but I couldn't figure it out without breaking the thing, and honestly, I didn't want to do that. So, the hardest part in this is honestly the masking. As you can see, I got some big, thick uh, blue masking tape there. Uh, I would rip off a nice big strip, push it down into the crevice, and take a soft cardboard. That's something I got in the mail from a Ford dealership telling me that I can sign the text alerts now. But it worked perfectly. I wiggle the tape down in there, push it against the side as best I can, and then use the cardboard to press it down firmly. See right there, I'm making sure the edges, because the hardest part of this is you'll notice the black is not flush with the white. There's actually a crevice there that goes in that when you paint, you have to get the paint down in there. But I didn't want to spray paint the black also because it's a nice gloss black which will match the gloss finish of the red that I've chosen to do on everything. You can't tell, Mike really likes red. Just uh, just a little bit. I, I put some blue in there for you, Corey. That's right. That's right. I'll, I'll just rip it off later. <laughs> <laughs> It's okay. It gets discarded like my feelings. <laughs> whoa, whoa. You have feelings? Yes. Uh, deep, deep, deep in the dark hole that where my heart should be. <laughs> I recommend having um, a nice pair of clippers too because you'll... I'm just waiting until Sony like starts releasing multicolored accessories. I'm sure they will, and I'll be quite sad, but I'm pretty sure that's a ways off right now. <laughs> Maybe we're giving them the idea to do it. I mean, they did shut down that one company that was making faceplates, which is what gave us the idea to do this in the first place. Oh, well, you'll find out. You'll find out when we start getting uh, pelted with DCMAs or whatever they call them. Oh, that would be so bad. This under section that I'm about to get to in a second was pretty tricky because it narrows, being the PlayStation 5 Slam, it narrows pretty good there. So I had to work my way in, push it down about halfway, and then I had to cut to create the line that I needed. That's why I use those, those, those are really sharp clippers, they're actually meant for modeling. Not the runaway kind, but the super nerdy plastic dude kind. Oh, beautiful hands. <laughs> Look at those hairy knuckles. And this is why the, the pointy clippers are so good here, because I can get in there and cut a bunch of that excess crap off of there. And I would imagine even if you do accidentally expose some of the some of the, the the glossy black on the inside of those, I'm gonna call them fins. Probably not gonna see those. You're not. Uh, honestly, I'm just being very careful, I guess here. Um, at, at a quick glance, you're not gonna notice it. You really are. One thing I do recommend is looking at your, your tape and making sure how long your tape can be on there. There's a certain amount of time before the tape, the sticky on the tape actually solidifies and it makes it really 
As you can see here, he's just checking. He's checking a lot of his corners, making sure everything's lining up perfect, and he's got that space between the tape and um, the, the, the fins. Again, I'm lack of a better term I have for him. This is better than what I was calling them. Side thingies. <laughs> Definitely make sure that that top part is covered really well. You do not want to get paint on those um, those co those copper connectors or gold plated. I think they're gold connectors, aren't they? Uh, Is it gold or copper? Yes, they're shiny. <laughs> the shiny, the shiny parts. You do not want to get paint on those shiny parts, or else you probably run the risk of breaking your uh, uh, you know dual sense charging station. Right, which is but, why. You know, that, Why here in a sec you'll see me actually rip off a big piece and go across the oh, I think right here it is. Um, nope. <laughs> I'll actually go across the top with another really big piece so just to make sure that it's nothing is gonna get in there. I do all this and there's gonna be a comment down below in the video be like, you know if you turn those 90 degrees the the, the fins pop right off. <laughs> if we if we miss that, please feel free to leave it down. We would love to hear from. You. And then I can make a video laughing at mine. <laughs> it'll just be it'll just be five minutes of court one. Because <laughs> it's easy for me to judge him because I don't ever have to go through this because I just use the USB C connector on my on my consoles or on my controller. So. I have to say, this thing is, is pretty nice looking. Um, and the fact that it's got the two controller slots. It, it looks really good beside uh, the PlayStation with the finished controller, which you'll see at the end of the video. first just like in every other video read your can read your can figure out what you can spray what you can't spray make sure you get the right kind of paint so shake your can two or three minutes then test off center which is what I'm doing right now you'll see me spray down there um, I'm spraying off cover up that white that I almost painted my my controller by accident <laughs> And then, especially on the sides, the, see where this is upright? You want to be very careful because you don't want the paint to, to drip, to like glob up and, and run down the side. So I'm trying to use very thin strokes here. I'm not trying to cover it up too much. I'm not trying to be too pasty. Uh, it's really easy when you're painting to want to get it done and get it done fast. So take your time, multiple coats, work out really good for you. I think I ended up doing three or four coats um, on this. Uh, just trying to make sure I had nice coverage, but I didn't want to put too much on at the same time so that it would dry or you know, get too wet and actually run down there because it would just make it look terrible with a huge flat surface. A big thing is you got to make sure you get into those grooves. You'll see me come up in a sec and I'll run down those grooves. If you get a little, little right there, you have to get a little close on those. Just be careful not to spray too much. You'll see at the top there that I actually had a lot of paint blob up, but that's just because we're throwing down one side and the other. The insides aren't bad at all.
pretty sure this is our fourth, fourth coat. Um, I think I may have done one off screen just because I'm sure you want to see me paint this thing the same way over and over again. But as you see, the red is starting to look really bright. Um, it's got a really nice coverage on it. paint the other side. The cool thing about this is as you can see it's real nice. It's real matte at this point. And the cool thing about this is that when you mask that top part with the extra control plugs in it, it creates a nice spot for you to flip it over. Even if it's not completely dry, you can flip it over and still paint the underside. You can do the same thing here. Nice thin coat multiple times. Uh, there is a rubber piece on the bottom. Um, on the side, I just decided to paint over that. It hasn't caused any issues yet, but if you really wanted to, you could mask around that. It just takes a lot more work. This is the color primer I used. I realized I hadn't actually shown that can. <laughs> I, mean, I decided to use the glaze again because it works so well on the controller. The controller hasn't run or um, the paint hasn't rubbed off any on it. And I figured with this, the charging station, I'd be touching it a lot, putting it back on. So having a nice glaze on it too would be beneficial. I'm trying to figure out a good way to flip this back over so I don't have it actually stick to the cardboard on the bottom and peel off the paint. I eventually figure out that if I flip it sideways, it's still in there perfectly. <laughs> now, again, I've said it, Big Jim said it, a little in the face. Read your can, read your can, read your can, read your can. What should I do with my can again? I'm confused. Read it. And this particular one, you spray a nice light coat on, which I do, and then you have to wait two to three minutes and then give it a nice wet coat. Uh, pins. <laughs> it's been about two minutes and I'm about to apply the wet coat. Other clear finishes, you don't have to wait this long with the glaze. Uh, it says wait 24 hours. I recommend waiting 48. Um, I think I ended up waiting 36 just because I got busy and didn't go check it. <laughs> but you want to give your glaze plenty enough of time to dry. Um, you'll see the wet spot in the bottom left in front of the screen. You can kind of touch that and give you an idea of how dry it is uh, before you actually pick up and mess the fingerprints in your the thing. But that's uh, that's about it. Pretty simple. Um, it's probably the simplest one to paint. Uh, took the longest prep time, but yeah. Let's uh, roll that through the
cycle is complete.